I have been investigating the so-called missing link between man and ape for many years and I have found that every single one of them um, simply is no link whatsoever. For example, Australopithecus, the uh, skeleton of Lucy, this really consists only of a 40% skeleton of a not very large ape. And they have not got any evidence that it ever walked upright in any of the bones that they have found of that skeleton. If we analyze the so-called missing links, we find a trail of fraud, deception, and speculation. For example, Nebraska man was reconstructed, family and all, from an extinct pig's tooth. Piltdown Man is now universally known to be a deliberate hoax, consisting of an ape's jaw and a human skull doctored to look old. Neanderthals were just plain people. some of which suffered from arthritis, rickets, or syphilis. Ramapithecus, Gigantopithecus, and Zygantropus were just apes. While Heidelberg Man and Cro-Magnum were completely human. So, despite evolutionists' misleading claims, the missing link is still missing. One of the more amusing things you hear these days is that uh, the DNA of man and chimpanzees is 98.3% identical. And I have to admit, as a geneticist, I find that kind of humorous, that you're not even that closely related to yourself. And so the genes you inherit from your mother, the genes you inherit from your mo uh, father, uh, are on the average, at a maximum, only 93% similar. Scientists claim that the hemoglobin of a chimpanzee is 98% the same as the hemoglobin of a human being. What they don't tell you is there are many other organisms, including slime molds, that have hemoglobin, which is also very similar to the hemoglobin of a human being. Now you would expect a lot of similarities between man and chimpanzee. We breathe the same air, we have muscles and bones, we digest things similarly. If we were created by the same God, we would expect to have lots of similarities. But let's suppose for just a moment that there was some truth in that figure. Oh, I've got a clue where in the world it could have come from. Uh, a cloud is 98% water. A jellyfish is 98% water. A watermelon is 98% water. To use evolutionary logic, there's no difference between a cloud, a jellyfish, and a watermelon. <laughs> Those 2% difference really make a whale of a difference uh, in man and chimpanzee.
In the first chapter of Genesis, we are told that God created every living thing according to its own kind to reproduce and fill the earth. This is exactly what we see. If, as evolutionists claim, a reptile evolved into a bird, who would the first bird mate with? Furthermore, all intermediate forms would be fatal. What good is half a wing or half a beak? All animals have complex organs required for their survival. For instance, dolphins and bats have a sophisticated sonar that they use to locate food. Unless these highly efficient sonar systems are fully functional, the animal dies. Certainly, the scientific evidence overwhelmingly supports the creation model. While evolutionists are forced to admit that from their perspective, both the origin of life and the origin of the major groups of animals remain unknown. complex body structures that we have probably did not come from the evolution maybe it did it's really hard to decide which one it could be to me again it takes more faith to believe that all these perfect conditions came together at the right moment to allow all these complex aspects of life to, to come into being and to come into existence and to me that it takes a lot more faith to believe that hogwash than it does to believe that there's an awesome God that created us a question of origins we've examined the evidence Now it's up to you as an individual to make a choice. In the book of Romans chapter one, the Bible tells us that the evidence that God has created is so obvious from the things that God has made that if you reject that evidence, you are without excuse. And in the book of Colossians chapter one, the Bible tells us who the Creator is. Not only that He has created all things, but that He has redeemed us from our sins through His death upon the cross at Calvary. The Creator is Jesus Christ. Will you acknowledge that you have been created? Will you recognize that you have been separated from the Creator, Jesus Christ, because of your sins? Will you accept him, who he is, and what he's done, and who you are, and what you've done? It will be the greatest choice that you could ever make for eternity. <laughs>